Welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be doing a foundation review and wear test on the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder Foundation. I picked this up because I didn't have it yet. And when I ordered the cream bronzer, I'd always been curious about this. So I figured why not? I'll pick it up with the cream bronzer. If you haven't seen my video reviewing the cream bronzer, the new what's it called? The Beautiful Skin Cream Bronzer from Charlotte Tilbury. I will link it up above. My opinion seems to have been different from everyone else. I didn't watch any reviews before putting it up and it looks like maybe I have an unpopular opinion, but it's up there if you want to watch it and see. So we will be doing a application. So I'll be showing myself applying this foundation to my skin. We'll be doing a four hour wear test. I'll be inserting in some swatches and then we'll come back at the end of the night around eight to 10 hours later and give my final thoughts on this foundation. If you like foundation reviews, if these are the kinds of videos that you like because I love doing them, please give this video a thumbs up. I do upload videos every Sunday and Thursday, so twice a week. And with all that being said, let's just jump to the footage of me applying this to my face. All right, so I have everyone zoomed in. Let's talk about this foundation a little bit. So this one says your light dream skin foundation, sunscreen 15, not really great for a lightweight foundation. Let's see, I got the shade four fair, which right off the bat, I have shade four neutral in the beautiful skin. And this is already, it looks okay on my hand, but it does seem like it's a little bit lighter. I do really like the bottle. I love these plastic tubes that have like the little squeezy tube up top. I just think they're really convenient to travel with. So this comes in 12 shades and it's $44. So it could have a little bit more of a better shade range. However, it is supposed to be lighter coverage. So for light coverage in a flawless looking finish, blend a small amount all over the face. Thank you. <laughs> For more luminosity, pat on top of areas where you want more glow. Okay, so you can kind of use this as a highlight. I won't be doing that. That's not something that is what I look for. So on the Charlotte Tilbury website, it says that it has mica silicones and emollient esters offer a soft gliding effect for easy application and a silky soft lightweight finish. Charlotte's magic matrix of ingredients keep your skin moisturized for up to 24 hours. The magic, the magical pigments give you natural looking coverage and a dreamy radiant finish. I do prefer a natural, natural coverage. I do like a, a dreamy radiant finish. That sounds all great to me. So we are going to get to applying this on my face. Oh, let's see. Ingredients to give you minimized pores, decrease wrinkles, hydrated, smooth, and illuminated skin. That all sounds fantastic to me. So I'm going to do half my face with a brush, half with a sponge. I have a feeling I'm going to like the sponge side more, but who knows? This is why we test both out. So I'm just going to squeeze some on the back of my hand here. Something just to note that I don't like is you actually have to put it down this way. Ooh, I'm going to lose the foundation on the back of my hand. You have to put it down this way. Like, I don't know why I keep wanting to set it down like this with the top facing up, but you can't do that. It has to be this way. This way it'll fall over. So not that that's that big of a deal, but for some reason I keep instinctively wanting to put it that way and it's falling over. So let's get to blending this. The shade is not as bad as I was expecting. I think because it's a lighter coverage, it's matching a little bit better since my skin can kind of come through. I did use quite a bit on the back of my hand and the sponge is just soaking it up. That's to be expected. It's a lighter foundation. It's not very thick, so it's just going to soak into the sponge more. However, the sponge side looks nice. All right, so I'm going to put another 
kind of just pump on the back of my hand here. I'm gonna try the brush. I have a feeling, like I said, that the sponge is just gonna be nicer, but we'll see if the sponge just soaks up too much product, if that's something that you're concerned about. You could always just put it on with a brush and then go over it with a sponge to just kind of smooth it out, give you the sponge finish without soaking up all the product. Yeah, I don't really enjoy the brush side. It's leaving brush marks. You can see like where I'm spreading the foundation. I don't know if you can tell, but here's the sponge side. It just like looks more evenly covered than this side. So I am gonna just go over it with my sponge. All right, so I've smoothed it out with the sponge on both sides. Here's what we're looking like. I do think that it minimized pores. So it's looking nice there. I always forget to mention this in the beginning, but I did do all my skincare. So I have sunscreen on, primer, moisturizer, all of that. And yeah, I think it looks very nice. It's not a sheer coverage. It's absolutely a light coverage, which is fine. That's what it's advertised as. Just sometimes I think like sheer and light coverage kind of get intermixed a little bit. And this is a light coverage. You can't really see my skin too much, which is how I'm categorizing that. Like I can see my skin, but with a sheer tint, I would expect to see more redness. Like I feel like a lot of my redness is covered up, maybe except for the tip of my nose. That's all right. But this is looking really nice. Their true test is going to be the wear because with lighter coverage foundations, sometimes the wear just isn't there for it. And that's, I mean, that's what I find the biggest issue with like coverage foundations is it's just the wear time and how it fades off fuller coverage foundations tend to wear a little bit longer because they can kind of have more just like that grip to it so we're gonna do that and see so i am first going to finish up the rest of my makeup i'm gonna put a little bit of powder it's feeling a little bit tacky and then i will be back to talk about just my first impressions all right, so makeup is on. And of course, I have everything that I'm wearing on my face right now listed down in the description box. So I am really liking this. I would agree that my pores look minimized. I wouldn't say that they look blurred. I can definitely still see, I mostly like have enlarged pores right here on the tops of my cheeks. I can still see my pores. So like I said, I wouldn't say that they're blurred completely, but they definitely are minimized. And this is just like, I feel what the claim is. I feel like it's natural, it's radiant, it's healthy looking. I feel like this just looks like how I feel comfortable on a day to day, not like anything special going on. I feel comfortable just like if I was meeting someone for lunch, if I was running errands, just put together, but not over the top, which again, like some people like that. And that's, that's great for me. I like to be just a little bit more toned down day to day. And that's really I mean, that's where we're at. I'm mostly just curious to see how this wears because if this wears well, this is a really great light coverage option. Again, I can't get over how much I just really like this kind of packaging, especially for a light coverage foundation. I feel like it's very convenient to just take with you on the go. So that's where I'm gonna just leave it because I don't, I don't wanna continue to just repeat myself. It does still feel a little bit tacky. I did powder. I don't I don't use a lot of powder at all. So it's fine that it still feels a little bit tacky, but that is there. I wouldn't say my hair is like sticking to my face. No. So it's fine as far as that goes. That's really the only time that it bothers me if I'm continuously having to like find that one hair that's just stuck to my face. And that's where I'm gonna leave you guys. 
I will see you all in four hours and we'll see if my opinions changed at all. Right now it is 1030. So what is that? 130, 1230, 230. I will see you all at 230. All right, everyone. So it has been four hours. I've been outside for probably at least 75% of that. So definitely never ends. Just constant dogs. The rooster is just growing. So I've definitely been putting this to the test and I am in the shade, so can't really see too much, but I almost think, kind of go up close here on my skin. I mean, obviously like I'm not wearing a filter or anything. So my skin like actually looks like skin, but looking at it in the mirror, I almost think that this looks better than when I applied it. It feels like it's more lightweight. It's not tacky anymore. So it really just sunk into my skin. And that's what it almost feels like. It feels very lightweight. It's still, I mean, it looks like it's holding up fairly well. I haven't really checked around my mouth, but it seems like at least on my cheek area and my forehead that it's holding up pretty good. And... I'm really liking it so far. I'm curious to see how the next four hours go. One time I reviewed a foundation and looked great at the four hour mark and then it just tanked. So we're gonna see how the next four hours go. But yeah, again, I'm really, really liking it. This eye has not stopped watering. So I'm sure some of the foundations come off there. But we're just gonna keep enjoying the day outside. I'm gonna keep playing fetch with my dogs. I'll be inserting in some swatches right about now, and then I will see you all in another four hours. Hello everyone, welcome back to my final check-in. So it has been over eight hours, it's been about nine now. The foundation's looking a little rough. It doesn't look bad, there have definitely been worse, but it absolutely needs to be touched up. So usually I just take my makeup sponge and just soak up excess oils around my face. I don't do any kind of touch-ups during the day just because I do wanna see how this wears truly if you weren't going to do anything, but I would probably have touched this up maybe around the six hour mark. It's looking, it actually looks so much better now that I've done that. So this looks really good. I'm not gonna say it looks fantastic. Like this is an okay wear. I would wear this to work if I was working a long day and know that it would hold up. I just wouldn't say it's the best long wear foundation, but it is very nice. The entire day, it felt very lightweight. It felt just really comfortable on the skin. I don't feel like it broke apart at all, especially even around my glasses. And I was outside a lot today. I probably spend almost all my time outside. I took the dogs for a walk. I took a nap in the hammock. So I was outside. Like my mascara definitely did not last. That's all busted. But as far as the foundation, I think it looks really good. Even like I have this huge, well, huge. I have a very a deeper forehead wrinkle and it's not settling into my wrinkles. It's not really settling in around my mouth. It just has faded very naturally and nicely. So I appreciate that. This just, yeah, I would, I really like this. I'd wear this again. This is something that I could just count on. I love, again, I've mentioned this, but for ease of travel, this is just really nice to have in your makeup bag. If you're someone who carries your makeup from place to place, I think that this would be a really solid foundation that you could rely on for just every day. It's not one that I would wear for like a dinner date or anything like that, but for an everyday, I love this. I mean, it's been nine hours and this has held up really well for, for that. I mean, I can't expect 
a foundation to look like it does when I first apply it. And for what I've done today, like I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. So that's my thoughts on that so far. As far as other Charlotte Tilbury foundations go, I've only tried the beautiful skin one. I do have the airbrush foundation and I have the magic foundation. I think that those are all the ones that Charlotte Tilbury has in her lineup. So I do plan on doing foundation wear test for each of those. And then I will be doing a foundation ranking, I think, between all four of those. Let you know kind of just like a summary of my thoughts. But that's where we're at. Like I, I'm happy with this. I do, my only thing is that I got the shade 4 Fair and I got 4N in the Beautiful Skin Foundation. And I would say that it's a good shade match. Obviously you saw the swatches. Even though I haven't opened them, I will swatch the Magic Foundation and the Air Brush Foundation so you can see all of them next to each other. This feels a little bit lighter, but this was one of her like more earlier foundations. So maybe her shade range has evolved, but I would not count on the shade range being the same across the board. I have not swatched them yet. So obviously like you saw swatches before this clip, you're gonna know before I know. But if I had to guess, the, the shade range is not consistent because I do feel like this is lighter just based off of memory than the beautiful skin. I remember the beautiful skin being just like a smidge dark for me. And if anything, I, I think I was a, the same shade. So yeah, that's my only complaint about that. I wish that she would maybe go back and kind of closer match them up number wise. So it's not too much of a guessing game on which one you need to buy. But that's really all I have to say about this. I really, I'm pleasantly surprised by this. I did think that I was gonna like it because I do like a lighter coverage foundation, but I was not expecting to like it that much. And that's where I'm gonna end this video. So again, if you like foundation videos, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.